as you focus on the breath, you have to be very careful because the mind can change its direction very quickly. In fact, so quickly that the Buddha said there is no adequate analogy for how fast it is to change direction. Which, if you've been going in a bad direction, is not bad. But if you've been going in a good direction, it's not so good. So you need to develop mindfulness so you can remember where you're going and why. So you can keep headed in that direction no matter what impulse comes up in the mind to go someplace else. You're sitting here with the breath. All of a sudden thoughts of the kitchen come up, thoughts of the orchard come up, thoughts of what's going to happen today. All kinds of things can come up and you're suddenly someplace else. Or if you find yourself someplace else, then very quickly come back. But try to your best not to go to those other places. You have to be alert, mindful, and discerning to figure out which direction is the ones you want to go in and how you can maintain that intention. And of course, mindfulness is what helps you remember. So as you're staying here, you're trying to get the mind to settle down. We're not just resting the mind. We're actually exercising some very useful qualities. So that when the mind is tempted to change its direction, you'll have those qualities in hand. They'll be quick to see what's happening and remember what the best way is to keep the mind on course. Because it can go off course all kinds of ways. It can go off course because of things it likes, things it doesn't like, things it's deluded about, things it's afraid of. And all too often we're not clear about what the motive force is for going to these other places. And just It's like a, just a brute force that comes up in the mind and pushes you someplace else. But if you learn to look carefully at the mind, slow things down, you begin to see there are certain choices being made. And they have their reasons, which is why the Buddha said mindfulness is good basically as a dam to hold things in check when something unskillful is coming up in the mind. But you need your discernment to do away with it. In other words, you have to understand why the mind would go there and know immediately why it's not a good reason to, why it shouldn't be listening to that. The mind has its shorthand reasons. Sends little blipping messages here and there. And it knows what it's all about. But again, it's like kids in a classroom sending coded messages and the teacher pretending that she's not noticing what's going on. You've got to train the teacher to be mindful and alert and to be discerning, to read the code and be able to say no to anything unskillful that's being passed around inside the mind. Because otherwise you find just the course of the mind as you go through the day is all over the place. If you could draw a map of where the mind has gone in the course of a day, it would be more tangled than a bird's nest. So try to get some clear direction from the mind and learn how to stay with that direction. Don't let it change. And be quick, because the desire to change is quick too. This is why in the forest tradition when we do walking meditation, we don't do a very slow walking. We try to walk at a normal pace so the mind can maintain its awareness and alertness when things are happening faster and not get pushed off by the momentum of whatever changes coming up in the mind.